Having access to a university library means having access to a huge range of resources, both physical and digital. Whilst this offers great opportunities for your research or when reading around a topic, it can be hard to know where to start. This video looks at the resources you can access digitally and offers some top tips to get the best out of them. Although students and researchers are most likely to be interested in academic and scholarly literature, as this is what they need for their work, it's worth remembering that there are many other types of resource that you can use to supplement your reading, clarify your understanding, or read around a topic in more depth. We'll start in the top left of the screen with scholarly literature. This can take many forms, but it's most often found in academic books or journals. These detail the outcome of specific research projects and present the author's findings in a prescribed format. Most of the time, this output has been peer reviewed to ensure its suitability for publication. Prior to publication, the scholarly output will have been reviewed by experts in the same field who will look at it both as a piece of writing and to ensure that it's based on sound evidence and that any informational conclusions are correctly based on the research that's occurred. For this reason, peer-reviewed academic research is often regarded as the gold standard of academic publication, and this is why you'll come across it a lot on your course reading lists. However, just because a resource is being peer-reviewed, this doesn't mean that it can, you can avoid being critical of it. It's always acceptable to challenge the ideas you're reading about, whatever format they take. This is an important skill that you'll develop during your studies, which will help you a great deal after you've moved on. The University Libraries offers a huge range of peer-reviewed academic literature, both in print and online. Moving on, you'll also be familiar with textbooks, which offer a broad overview or a basic primer on a topic. In an academic world which relies on peer-reviewed academic outputs, some people can be a bit snobbish about textbooks, but they do have their place. They're useful to quickly look up concepts, get a basic understanding of a topic, or as a way to refresh your knowledge when you need it. They probably won't go into the depth that you need when reading the literature of your assignments, but they always offer a good place to start if you're unsure. The libraries hold a large number of textbooks online, and it can often be easier to get hold of an online copy than a physical one. As well as leisure reading, it's important to remember that newspapers and magazines can be a useful source for your work. The university subscribes to both historical and modern collections of many titles, which can be useful if you want to track the development of something, build a timeline of key events, or find out what opinions were like at any given point in history. Academic magazines such as The New Scientist or Scientific American are a really useful way to keep up with the latest developments in your field, stay ahead of new trends, or read event reports. The latest issues of these titles and more are usually available online instantaneously upon publication. Grey literature is a term that you might not have come across before, but you'll probably recognise the material in this category. It covers a huge range of technical and academic materials that may not have been formally published, but still contain valuable information. Resources such as technical reports, official publications by societies or businesses, discussion papers, and conference presentations, are all really useful if you want to look at practical rather than just theoretical information. They can also be particularly good if your chosen topic is quite niche. It can be harder to get material on extremely focused topics published formally, so grey literature is always a good source for this type of information. The term also covers dissertations and theses which have been produced by students. At Cambridge, these are deposited into the university repository Apollo, which is publicly accessible. These theses contain a wealth of research and are an excellent place to read about new approaches and see what your contemporaries are saying about the topic. The final resource to mention is primary sources. The appeal of these resources, providing a direct first-hand account from people who were there at the time, will obviously vary depending on the nature of your own research, but it's worth remembering that the university has a large range of archives and digitised primary resources like historical research notebooks and diaries that you might find useful or just interesting to look at to set things in context. These resources are available via the Cambridge Digital Library which, like Apollo, is freely accessible to all online. iDiscover is a tool you'll be using a lot during your time at Cambridge. It's our online discovery system for the library's collections and contains material from college, department and faculty, and the university libraries, and it's accessible from anywhere with an internet connection. Although the coverage across the university is extensive, it's not quite 100%, so always ask your librarian if you can't find what you're looking for. 
iDiscover is a good place to start looking for what we call known items, resources where you know the title and or the author you're looking for. Although you can browse for content, there are just so many resources on there to look at that you might end up feeling a little bit overwhelmed. As well as the library's physical collections, iDiscover covers ebooks, online journals, content from Apollo, our institutional repository, special collections materials, databases, and grey literature. So there's a lot to see, but don't worry, it's designed to be a simple search process. There are three main search options on the iDiscover homepage, and we'll look at each of them in turn. The first option you'll see is to search Cambridge Libraries Collections. This will look for printed books, ebooks, material from Apollo, physical content like archives and objects in the library collection. The important thing to point out about this search is that while it covers a lot, it doesn't cover electronic journals and articles unless there's a version in Apollo. For this type of material, you'll want to use the second option, articles and online resources. This will look at e-journals and content from the databases that the university subscribes to. Searching for article titles directly can be a little bit hit and miss. So the best thing to do is to use the reference you have to search for the title of the publication and then go in through the volume number or date to reach the content that you need. Any results for specific articles will display the article type next to them. So you will see phrases like article, newspaper and so on. The final option on the iDiscover homepage combines the previous two searches to search everything. This might seem like a good idea, but it actually produces a lot of results, which can be too overwhelming. As well as the content Cambridge has access to, this option will give you a lot of recommended resources relating to your search, and it can then be frustrating to realise you can't access them. However, if you want to get a broader overview of the literature out there on a topic, or do some wider reading, it can help to get you started. If you're just beginning your studies, it's probably not a tool that you'll want to use, as you're likely to need more focused results. If you're using the collection search option, iDiscover lets you specify where and what you want to search for, which can really help to narrow your results. For example, you can limit your search to just your college library if you want to see if something's available locally, or focus just on ebooks for ease of access. The final thing to point out about iDiscover is that it allows you to manage your library account. Current staff and students can log in using their Raven password and check out what they have on loan, the status of any requests and due dates. Logging into iDiscover also allows you to save items for later, a bit like putting them in an online shopping basket. You're not borrowing them at this stage, just reminding yourself that they're there. You can also look at your search history for your last 100 logged in sessions, which is really useful if you know that you found something earlier, but you can't remember exactly what it was you were searching for at the time. So in summary, iDiscover is very good at finding what are called known items. For example, a specific book on a reading list or the works of a particular author. It's also got a very comprehensive coverage of the physical items held in most libraries. If you want to browse for a specific subject, search for all the items we hold by a particular author or items published in a certain year, you can do this quite easily. But remember that as it covers so much, you might get a large list of results. Although iDiscover does list ebooks and offers you a way to limit your search to this format, you need to be aware that sometimes individual titles aren't indexed. If you can't find an ebook you think we should have access to, it's always worth checking with library staff just in case. In a similar way, typing in the name of a journal article won't always take you straight to where you want to go. It's best to search for the journal title and then find the article using the year and volume number of publication. And finally, iDiscover isn't great for generic browsing of titles as it offers millions of results, some of which you might not be able to access. We have some top tips that can help you make the best use of iDiscover. Firstly, always use the filter options when searching or when you get your initial results. You can filter by all sorts of areas and add any combination of criteria you like, for example, books within a specific date range on a particular subject. Our second tip is especially helpful if you're carrying out lots of complicated searches or doing an ongoing literature review. To save you setting up the same search every time, you can save these to your account and then just repeat them with the click of a button. The important thing to remember is that you need to be logged in for this to work, and you can do this easily with your Raven password. And finally, there's so much more you could discover about iDiscover than we have time to cover. Colleagues from across the libraries have made great online guidance with lots of how-to videos and step-by-step -step screenshots of just about anything that you'd want to do. So it's worth checking out the LibGuides for more information.
We've always held a large collection of online resources at Cambridge, but this has expanded considerably during the pandemic. and We now offer access to millions of books and hundreds of thousands of electronic journals. You can find these through iDiscover and the database A to Z. One thing it's worth pointing out about online resources is that our access is a little bit changeable depending on subscriptions and trials, but we'll show you how to keep up to date. The screen shows you what searching for an ebook in iDiscover looks like and highlights some terms that you might come across. On the screen, you'll see three different versions of a book. Each book has the same content, but they come in different formats as indicated by the text next to them. The top result is the ebook. You can tell this as it displays a green link reading online access. Clicking this link will take you through to the ebook where you may be asked to sign in with your Raven password if you haven't previously. The second item in the list is the physical paperback copy of the book. iDiscover indicates this by showing a list of libraries where the book is available. Remember that if the book is held in more than one library, for space reasons, iDiscover will only display the name of the first and then the phrase and other locations. Clicking on this link opens up a list of other places where you can get the book, so please don't panic if your library isn't the first one that's listed. For some titles, you'll see a note in red which reads Electronic Legal Deposit. Cambridge is one of six legal deposit libraries in the UK, which means that it's entitled to claim a free copy of every title published in the UK. Since changes to the law in 2013, this has included an increasing number of ebooks. However, because of strict licensing restrictions, you're only able to read these on dedicated terminals within the library rather than online from wherever you are. One of the best ways to look for specific journal titles is by using the dedicated e-journal search option, which you'll find in the bar at the top of any iDiscover page. This brings up the option to enter a journal title or serial number, or to browse journal titles by the first letter of their name. As it's a search specifically for e-journals, this automatically filters out any content which might clutter your search. When you do a search, you'll get a result which lists the title and other basic information. To access the journal, look for the little green online access option and follow the link. This takes you through to the home page of the journal itself, where you can find the content that you want to read. The most obvious benefit of ebooks and e-journals is that you can, at least in theory, access them from wherever you are. You can find a reference to something in what you're currently reading and read that new reference instantly rather than waiting until you're next in the library. Many of the platforms also offer easy annotation of the content or allow you to download them to your device. The biggest issue with these resources is that libraries often subscribe to different packages of content with different rules and availability. This means that we might not have access to the complete run of journal titles or that access to different years might be spread across different platforms. All of these platforms operate in a slightly different way. So although they have similar functionality, the option to do something might be in a different place or be called something different depending on the site. With ebooks in particular, there is an issue with multiple users. Sometimes resources are restricted to a certain number of users at any one time, and once this is reached, you might have to wait in a queue. It's worth persevering though, as spaces usually free up pretty quickly. Not everyone enjoys the experience of reading on screen, and we often get questions about printing material out. There are limits on how much you're legally allowed to print from this material, so that's not always an option. Helpfully, our colleagues across Cambridge Libraries have produced some guidance on making the most of reading on screen, which might help you if you find this difficult. Our main tip when using online resources is to always check the catalogue record really carefully to make sure that we do actually have access to the exact journal volume you need. Just because you found the title doesn't mean that we'll have access to every issue. If you find yourself in a queue for an ebook, it's worth checking back later, as these usually resolve themselves fairly quickly. Our final tip is to follow our colleagues who work in the e-journals and ebooks teams. Not only are they on top of any service disruption issues, but they also regularly share details of new and trial resources, which you might find interesting for your research. There's one bonus tip to mention that can help you access electronic materials when you're away from campus. Lean Library is a browser extension which looks at the material you're looking for and searches Cambridge descriptions to see if we have access. If we do, then you'll be directed to the item you want, and if not, the extension will try and find an openly accessible version for you to read. 
If that doesn't work, you'll be offered the chance to request the item via interlibrary loan from another institution. This is a quick and simple process which can really help you to avoid paywalls and endless logins. All you need to do is visit the Cambridge Lean Library page and follow the instructions to download the extension to your browser of choice. Much of the online content the libraries offer is provided through subscriptions to large databases like Scopus and Web of Science. Databases contain large collections of content which they organise on the basis of subject and format, so you know that you're going to get some results that are really relevant to your work. Cambridge currently subscribes to over 1,000 subject-specific databases, including those covering all aspects of the physical sciences. The easiest way to access these databases is by using the A to Z Databases tool, which you can find a link for at the top of any iDiscover page or through our LibGuides. There are several search options available to you when using the A to Z. You can use the box on the left to filter databases by subject, for example, maths or physics. This option allows you to filter to only one subject at a time, but it does offer the chance to explore databases that will be directly relevant to your studies. Once you've limited to a subject, you can use the middle two boxes to further streamline your search according to type or vendor if you'd like. For example, you can choose to look for only open access databases in astronomy or chemistry databases from Wiley. However, in practice, filtering by subject is usually enough to reduce your results to something manageable. The box on the right can be used to search for a specific database, so if you know exactly what it is you want to look for, you can enter the name here and go straight there. So what are databases good for? They're probably the best way to find subject-specific scholarly literature that's relevant to your works, although they also contain a range of other information like reviews and popular articles. You can use the filters within each database to narrow down your results and find exactly what it is you need. Databases contain thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of results, so it can be overwhelming to use them without filters. You can narrow down the hits within a database to a specific topic or by type of output or date range, whatever it is you need for your research. You can set alerts in each database to notify you of any new content relevant to your work so that when something is published, you get an alert straight to your inbox. This is a really great way to keep on top of the literature on a topic and is especially handy if you're doing a literature review. An alternative to this is to run a manual search every so often to pick up new materials. You can create really complex and specific searches to narrow down what you need. And rather than typing these in every single time, many databases will allow you to save them so you can run them instantly. You need to remember to log into databases for this to work. For all their positives, databases do have some downsides. They're not great for casual browsing as they contain so much information. You need to have some idea of what it is you're looking for before you start using them to avoid being overwhelmed by information. And you need to be prepared to run multiple searches across different databases to get all the information you need. Each database is run by a different company, so it operates in a slightly different way, which can be frustrating. You'll learn how to do something in one database and then you'll find that the button is in a different place in another. But the principles are all broadly the same. And finally, databases love to do upgrades and upgrades and redesigns, which means that features and layouts can change in between logins. All the functionality will be the same, but everything will look a little bit different. The sheer number of databases Cambridge subscribes to can feel overwhelming, so we've done some of the hard work for you and highlighted the best bets options in this yellow box that you'll see on every subject page. This is a specially created list of the databases, the best ones on that topic, and it offers a really good place to start if you're feeling overwhelmed. When accessing any database, it's important to always go through the database A to Z or iDiscover, as these links are already set up to recognise that you're coming from Cambridge. They'll also stop you hitting paywalls or being redirected somewhere that you can't access, which often happens if you just try and log in via something like Google. You'll need to log into these databases with your Raven password, but you should get automatic access if we subscribe to them. And finally, it's a good idea to always keep an eye out for the latest databases to be added. Cambridge is offered a lot of trial subscriptions to databases, which might be of use to your research. You can keep up to date on these trials by following the e-journals at Cambridge or your departmental social media accounts.
In addition to electronic journal subscriptions, ebooks, and databases, there are other resources that you might come across when trying to find information for your research. Here we'll highlight a few that you might be using. Google Scholar is a search engine's tool to find literature. It looks at a wide range of content based on your search, including scholarly outputs, technical reports, and working papers. Please remember that this is a commercial product, and just because Google says something is scholarly doesn't mean you shouldn't check it for quality. Another downside is that access is often restricted off campus to the actual content, which can be frustrating. If you want to use Google Scholar, the best thing to do is to set up something called library links, found in the settings menu. Simply search for the University of Cambridge, select the e-journals at Cambridge box and hit save. After this, whenever you perform a search in Google Scholar, you should see the e-journals at Cambridge label appear next to your search results. And selecting this should take you directly to the university subscription if we hold it. Apollo is the university's open access repository. It contains a wealth of research outputs from Cambridge staff and students, including openly accessible versions of papers, theses, conference posters and more. Apollo is freely available online from anywhere and is a really useful source of scholarly information. Remember that not all of these outputs have been peer reviewed, so you should always double check any of the claims made. The Cambridge Digital Library hosts a range of digitised historical content from across the university's collection. This includes material from people such as Isaac Newton through to Stephen Hawking's thesis and is really useful if you're looking for historical context or just out of personal interest. You may come across research outputs on sites like researchgate or academia.edu, but did you know that these sites were originally established as social networks for academics? Some authors share their work on these platforms as a way of connecting with their colleagues, but any full text publication should be treated with caution. Not only may they be breaching copyright restrictions, but they may be incorrect or even actively harmful. These commercial sites are not legitimate open access repositories, and they don't perform any quality checks when something is shared, meaning that anyone can register for an account, post something and call it research. So always be careful. The final resource to touch on is Archive. This is a popular preprint server where authors share versions of their work with the wider community before they submit for publication. This helps them to get informal critique and review, and is used by some disciplines as the main method of sharing outputs. It contains valuable information, but it's always a really good idea to verify any claims made and see if a formally published peer reviewed version of the output is available. We hope this video has been useful. You can find more information on navigating the online library and other topics on our LibGuide.